Which sounds more like Nazis? National Socialists or National Zionists? Where does the Z in Nazi come from? Socialists or Zionists? As usual, the evil is hidden in plain sight. And as Britain's first Prime Minister so rightly noted, the world is governed by very different personages from what is imagined by those who are not behind the scenes. Guess who made the Holocaust possible, friends? It's not who you think. Guess who funded the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917 and the rise of Hitler and the Third Reich? American banks. Did you know Hitler's quest for a German master race of superior beings also called for a new world order? There are many precedents to Hitler's genocide of the Jews, Lenin and Stalin's terror famines, the extermination of Armenians by Muslim Turks during World War I, the brutal reductions of native peoples colonized by Europeans beginning with the Canary Islands in 1478 and continuing in the Americas, Australia, Asia. These genocides continue with scant media coverage. In Africa, the World Health Organization vaccination depopulation agenda has continued since 1974 when Henry Kissinger issued Memorandum 200 stating that depopulation of the third world was a top national security priority. Today, Muslims are slaughtering, beheading, and crucifying Christians as young as 12 years old, and Muslims, moderate Muslims, as well. In Africa and the Middle East, we have had beheadings in our own country, yet they are not called uh, Islamic terrorism. Islam is not mentioned. It's called workplace violence. Why? And with all of these genocides going on in Africa, Middle East, of Christians, the Vatican is quiet, as quiet as a church mouse. Why? In 1933, Adolf Hitler, a former Catholic Satanist, justified his anti-Semitic policies to the German Catholic hierarchy on the grounds that he is only treating the Jews the way the church has treated them for centuries. He correctly reminds the prelates that the church has regarded the Jews as dangerous parasites and pushed them into ghettos for 1,500 years. Munich in 1918 was the scene of enormous upheaval. Germany had emerged defeated from the First World War and was going through a social crisis. This upheaval led to a revolt against the government. Kurt Eisner, a journalist of Jewish origins, and his social democrat followers carried out a bloodless coup with the support of the imperial army. Ludwig III and his family were sent into exile. Eisner became prime minister of the new government. However, those who imagined that this revolution, achieved without bloodshed, would bring stability to Germany were sadly disappointed. A secret society called the Tullia Society became the new government's first enemy. This was a deeply racist organization which took its name from Tuli. In Nordic mythology, the legendary kingdom whence came the ancient Germanic peoples and was founded in 1918 by Rudolf von Sebettendorf. In setting up the Tuli Society, Sebottendorf's racist ideas had been shaped by three ideologues who had devoted themselves to mysticism. Madame Blavatsky, Guido von Liszt, and Adolf Lanz. (laughs) 
Madame Blavatsky developed a theory that the Aryan race, which she believed to be the ancestor of the German people, was an allegedly superior race. According to this theory, one civilization had ruled the world thousands of years before the civilizations of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Atlantis. Blavatsky thought that this people were members of a very noble and pure race, but that they had been wiped from the face of the earth by a volcanic disaster. In her view, those who survived the disaster were scattered all over the world, as a result of which the Aryans intermingled with other races. In order to find evidence for her mystical myths, Blavatsky traveled as far as Tibet and studied Buddhist priests. One symbol she used on the cover of her book, The Secret Doctrine, was particularly striking, the swastika. Guido von Liszt thought along the same lines as Blavatsky. In his view, the German race were actually the representatives of the so-called Aryan race suggested by Blavatsky. Liszt also came up with another claim. Throughout the course of history, there had been secret societies which sought to continue and protect the culture of the Aryan race. The Freemasons, the Knights Templars, and the Rosicrucians. In 1912, he founded a secret society, similar to Freemasonry, called the German Order. Liszt died in 1919, but he left behind an admirer who would continue his ideas with the greatest zeal, master of the German Order, Adolf Lanz. In 1899, Lanz had founded a cult known as the New Templars and declared himself to be the Grand Master. Thus it was that he combined the characteristics of the Knights Templars with zealous racism. In 1905, he began publishing the anti-Semitic magazine Ostara to spread his racist ideas. In one article, Lance claimed that members of the master race sat differently from other people and even had a different foot structure. According to Lanz's superstitious belief, there was a so-called fight for survival between yellow and black, a struggle which yellow had to win at all costs. Right from the first edition of the magazine, Sebattendorf the future founder of the Thule Society was there among his followers and the proponents of the ideology he had infected them with. Sebattendorf, a member of the German order, was a Freemason. Thus it was that mysticism, racism, admiration for old pagan cultures and a hierarchical organization similar to that of Freemasonry all came together. In effect, this was the birth of Nazism. Another Luciferian component of the rise of the Third Reich was the Vril Society, or the Luminous Lodge, which combined the political ideals of the Order of the Illuminati with Hindu mysticism, theosophy, and the Kabbalah. It was the first German nationalist group to use the symbol of the swastika as an emblem linking Eastern and Western occultism. The Vril Society promoted the idea of a subterranean matriarchal socialist utopia ruled by superior beings who had mastered the mysterious energy called the Vril Force. 
This secret society was founded literally on Bulwer Lytton's novel, The Coming Race, 1871. The book describes a race of men physically far in advance of our own. They have acquired powers over themselves and over things that made them almost godlike. For the moment, they are in hiding. They are said to live in caves in the center of the earth. Soon they will emerge to reign over us. Quote, unquote. One of the world's greatest rocket experts, Dr. Willie Ley, who fled Germany in 1933. Dr. Ley said the Vril Society, which formed shortly before the Nazis came to power, believed they had secret knowledge that would enable them to change their race and become equals of the men hidden in the bowels of the earth. Methods of concentration, a whole system of internal gymnastics by which they would be transformed. Transformed. These methods of concentration were probably based on Ignatius uh, Loyola's spiritual exercises. The Jesuit techniques of concentration and visualization are similar to many occult teachings, especially in the shamanic cults and Tibetan Buddhism. The Nazis revered these Jesuit spiritual exercises, which they believe had been handed down from ancient masters of Atlantis. The occultists of the time knew that Ignatius was a Bosque, which some claimed that the Bosque people were the last remnant of the Atlantean race, and the proper use of these techniques would enable the reactivation of the Vril Force for the domination of the Teutonic Society and race over all others. The Vril Society believed that whoever becomes master of the Vril will be the master of himself, of others around him, and of the world. The belief was that the world will change and the lords will emerge from the center of the earth. Unless we have made an alliance with them and become lords ourselves, we shall find ourselves among the slaves, on the dung heap that will nourish the roots of the new cities that will arise. Enlightens the coming race, the subterranean people use the Vril Force to operate and govern the world, served by robots and able to fly on Vril-powered wings, the vegetarian vril Ya are by their own reckoning racially and culturally superior to everyone else on earth, above or below the ground. At one point, the narrator concludes that the Vril Ya are descended from the same ancestors as the great Aryan family, from which in varied streams have flowed the dominant civilization of the world. Remember, the uh, Queen of England and the royal, the British royal family are really German. Their name is Saxe Coburg Gotha. They changed it Around the same time all these secret societies were being put together in Germany here, <clears throat> before World War, or right after World War uh, I, with the rise of, the, of what would be the Nazis, uh, the British royal family changed their name to Windsor, because they are German. This is not uh, to be questioned, it's the truth. They did it because of the uh, world out cry against Germany at that time that was created so they it wasn't good PR so they changed their names so that they wouldn't get heat for being German ruling Britain but being German uh, of a German royal blood lineage actually from Bavaria is it all coming together all these coincidences that we can look back at uh, Queen Elizabeth's husband Prince Philip was a Nazi and others were Nazis. I'm not making any of this up. Now, I have links to all of these uh, sources and the books at my website, howardnema.com, uh, that's accompanying. There's a link to, the, uh, to this article that you can find at howardnema.com in the uh, description of this video as well. Now, the Vril Force, or Vril Energy, was said to be derived from the Black Sun, a big ball of prima materia, which supposedly exists in the center of the earth, giving light to the Vril Ya and putting the, out the radiation in the form of Vril. The Vril Society believed that Aryans were the actual biological ancestors of the Black Sun. This force was known to the ancients under many names. It has been called Chi, Ohas, Vril, Astral Light, Odic Forces, and Orgon. In a discussion of the 28th degree of the ancient and accepted Scottish rite of Freemasonry, called Knight of the Sun, or Prince Adept, Albert Pike said, and I quote, 
there is nature in nature one most potent force by means whereof a single man who could possess himself of it and should know how to direct it could revolutionize and change the face of the world. This is the force that the Nazis and their inner cult, inner occult circle were so desperately trying to unleash upon the world. For its which <clears throat> this is the force, ladies and gentlemen, that the Nazis and their inner occult circle were so desperately trying to unleash upon the world, for which the Vril Society had apparently groomed Hitler. A manifestation of the great work promulgated by the adepts of secret societies throughout the ages, the Vril Society latched on to a very old archetype already in the minds of alchemists and magicians, which was only reinterpreted by Leighton in the light of the age of occult revival and scientific progress. The idea of mutation and transformation into a higher form of a god-man was envisioned through the Vril Ya in Buller Leighton's The Coming Race. Leighton himself was an initiate of the Rosicrucians, and was well versed in the arcane esoteric philosophies, and of course the greatest advances in science of his day. Through his romantic works of fiction, this is a quote, through his romantic works of fiction, he expressed the conviction that there are beings endowed with superhuman powers. These beings will supplant us and bring about a formidable mutation in the elect of the human race. That is another quote from Morning of the Magicians by Jacques Bergier. So, as we move along here, it's still a lot to cover. I mean, a lot. Please stay tuned. This is important information. It's all verifiable. It's all documented. And it's all true. All we have to do is put the pieces together. And we know who to point the fingers at in the New World Order today. Because this will affect you. Whether or not you believe this or I believe this, the people in control of the world, the power people, the money people, the decision makers, believe it and live it and are working to create this new Atlantis, this new world order. Now, the idea of mutation and transformation into the higher form of a God-man is very dangerous. The moment we speak of an elect and illumined class, which is above the general populace, you inevitably encounter racism with, and classism, as we see today. Everyone's screaming about the rich people, but they don't realize that they're really targeting poor people compared to the rich people, targeting people like Trump or people like uh, Bill Gates or Warren Buffett, I mean. <laughs> are you kidding? These people are peasants compared to the personages um, that control things behind the scenes. Quote, We must be aware of this notion of a mutation, Bergier warns. It crops up again with Hitler, and it is not extinct today. And that's my warning to you. These quotes by Bergier and Paul Wells were written in the 1960s. But today, the philosophy is, sadly, once again in the forefront of popular culture. The New World Order is under direct influence and guidance of the New Age movement, a hodgepodge of occult doctrines and dangerous socialism, which hides under a cover of spiritual enlightenment. Theosophy is considered the main foundation, and its founder, Madame Blavatsky, was a great admirer of Leighton's In the Occult Conspiracy. Michael Howard writes about the compatibility of the two philosophies. Quote, Blavatsky had read Bulwark's Lighten's novels and was very impressed by their occult content, especially Zanoni and The Last Days of Pompeii. The latter was published in 1834 and dealt with a time between early Christianity and the mysteries of Isis in Italy in the first century AD. Blavatsky's esotericism was virulently anti-Christian. The racial ideas of Madame Blavatsky concerning root races and the emergence of a spiritually developed type of human being in the Aquarian Age were avidly accepted by the 19th century German nationalists who mixed theosophical occultism with anti-Semitism and the doctrine of the racial supremacy of the Aryan or Indo-European peoples." End quote. So we can see this connection. We can see this today, how they're using these deceptions to bring about this New Age movement. 
this do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, this perceived fairness and equality and all of these leftist ideologies. No different. It is the same order. It is the same agenda that led to the rise of Hitler, that led to the Bolshevik Revolution, that led to all of the conflicts before and since. The ideology of the Thule society was built on resurrecting pre-Christian pagan German culture. Within that ideology, the elimination of non-Aryan races assumed a similar importance. Heading the list were the blacks, gypsies and Jews. These words from one of the Thule Society's publications are an indication of this. Arrest the Jews. That will bring peace to our country. That is why the Thule leader Sibotendorf refused to accept the chancellorship of Kurt Eisner, one of the Jews he regarded as the eternal foe. He stated this quite openly. Yesterday we witnessed the destruction of all that we believe in and attach importance to. Instead of princes with whom we share a blood bond, our deadly enemies rule, the Jews. We cannot know what will be born out of such chaos. So long as I hold the iron hammer, I shall lead Thule to war. Our discipline is Germanic discipline, and Germanic means nobility. Our god is Wallvather. Our emblem is Aryan, the first flame, the sun, the eagle. From today our symbol shall be the eagle. It will remind us that we may have to die if we are to live. Now take notice to the previous mention of the sun in the video presentation. Sun worship plays a significant role in these Luciferian secret societies, and the sun god has many names. You'll find this also in movies. Constantly, Hollywood is using references to this Luciferian doctrine. Uh, it is all part of the conditioning, similar to the conditioning that Hitler and the Nazis put the German people under accepting the pagan Satanists, basically turning the people into willing participants in Satanism, or Luciferianism is really what it is. Lucifer is what they believe is the true one and only God. Lucifer and Satan uh, um, could be considered two separate entities or one, depending upon your point of view. In essence, it is the, uh, the epitome of, of evil, and uh, they believe it to be good. They believe the end justifies the means, so long as they achieve their goal of this new Atlantis. So take mention of uh, take notice of the mention of the sun. Uh, the secret societies worship the sun. They've been in many examples of this uh, shown in our own pop culture. Symbols of the sun. Uh, it's ancient and goes back uh, millennia to this dawn of time. Humankind, I should say. Now, the sun god has many names, Adam, Horus, Ra, Osiris, and Lucifer, the light bearer, son of the morning star. All of these combined beliefs make up the Luciferian doctrine. The true rulers of our world believe that Lucifer is the one and only true god, that Satan was unjustly cast out of heaven by a cruel and vindictive god who denied Adam and Eve the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, de denying them the fact that they too could be, become gods. And this is what these Gnostic Luciferians are working to build. This is the new age. This is the great work. The new age, the age of Aquarius, the age of enlightenment. This is what they believe and this is what they're working for. Did you know that Hitler was a member of the Thule Society? And G.W. Bush, and G.H.W. Bush, and Prescott Bush were all members of Yale Skull and Bones, which are both Bavarian German secret societies.
both Skull and Bones and Thule Society, and they are both known as the Brotherhood of Death. The Thule Society and Yale's Skull and Bones are both Bavarian secret societies. They are both known as the Brotherhood of Death, and they work, as with all secret societies, for the same goal of creating what they perceive to be a utopian world through secular humanism. A new age, this whole new age movement with the crystals and all this other Gaia religion. A new Atlantis for a new age, where through science and intellect, mankind itself will evolve into God. So we will become God. That is what they're working for. Uh, you must understand that these are just two of the many secret societies that are all part of the same order, and they are, indeed, working for the same goal. In Freemasonry, it is called the Great Work. These facts and correlations are scant recorded in history books and virtually absent from the discussion of the Nazis and the Holocaust. Here are just a few examples. After forcing many Jews to be baptized and then referring them as Moranos, which is swine, after an inquisition of which some 700 Moranos were burnt at the stake for showing signs of Jewish taint, Spain expels all Jews from the country. In 1492, the same year the New World was found. Okay, the New World was created. The same thing's happening. In 1485, 1497, and 1519, Jews are expelled from Warsaw and Krakow, Poland, then Portugal and Regensburg, Germany. 1555 to 1559, Pope Paul IV restricts Jews to ghettos and decrees that they are to wear distinctive headgear. Does this sound familiar? In 1566 through 1572, Pope St. Pius V expels Jews from the Papal States, allowing some to remain in Rome's ghettos and in Ancona for commercial reasons. Hmm. In 1592, Pope Clement VIII includes a ban on all Jewish books in the ex expanded edition of foreign forbidden books, excuse me. In 1826, Pope Leo XII decrees that Jews are to be confined to ghettos and their property is to be confiscated. Well, where did I hear about that? Some hundred years later, 115 years later, 112 years later. Also, uh, up until the 1930s, the Jews were that were in uh, the Vatican area were confined to a Rome's ghetto. It wasn't the Vatican. Again, the Vatican wasn't created as it, we know it today, uh, called the Vatican, Vatican City, until the city-state was uh, established in 1929. History repeats itself, as it is repeating itself today in yet another form. Did you know that Hitler's New World Order is the same New World Order called for by George H.W. Bush on September 11th, 1990. And it's the same New World Order called for by Pope Benedict and now Pope Francis. Speaking of the New World Order Pope, did you know Vatican City is a city-state surrounded by Rome? London and Washington, D.C. are also city-states. They are actual foreign sovereign countries to the land they occupy. That's right. Washington, D.C. is a separate country. It's not part of the United States. It is owned by the same personages behind the scenes that no one knows about that owns the Vatican and London. These black nobility, the families of the, the wealthiest of the wealthy. Vatican City was founded on February 11th, 1929. Italy is the headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church. It is home to the Pope and the wealth and culture of the Holy Roman Empire, including a treasure trove of priceless iconic art and architecture from ancient Roman sculptures, Renaissance frescoes, to the Sistine Chapel, whose ceiling was famously painted by Michelangelo. Are you aware that both the Old and New Testaments we know today have been altered by Gnostics? in Alexandria, Egypt, who corrupted the biblical scriptures? Are you aware of that? Did you know that as the Roman Empire was falling, Constantine became a Christian while still secretly worshiping the sun god Saul, also known as Baal? 
He issued the Edict of Milan ordering a tolerance for Christians. Constantine baptized his troops and presided as the first Sumus Pontifex, the official title of the Pope. Roman Catholicism transferred occult Baal worship into an already corrupted Christianity, bearing a mixture of witchcraft, Judaism, paganism, and perverted Christianity. To stamp out the spiritual rebellion of Martin Luther and the Protestantism uh, movement, Pope Paul III ordered the founding of the Order of the Jesuits as an intelligence network and secret militia of the Vatican. To this day, the Superior General of the Jesuits, the Black Pope, remember the Black nobility, the Black Pope, is the mysterious man behind the Pope. It is he who has the ultimate power in the Vatican. The Jesuits helped develop many cults, Freemasons, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christian Science, and many others, to serve the interests of the Vatican. Did you know Pope Francis is a Jesuit? As Hitler rose to power, he made a deal with Cardinal Pacelli, the future Pope Pius XII, that had devastating consequences, as did the role of the judges, scientists, academics, who individually and collectively made deals with and took benefits from Hitler. The founder of the Lutheran Church, Martin Luther, was a virulent anti-Semite, much quoted by Hitler. In fact, the Nazis scheduled their Kristallnacht, Kristallnacht purge in honor of Martin Luther's birthday. In his 1543 book on the Jews and their lies, Martin Luther described the Jews as a base, whoring people, that is, no people of God, and their boast of lineage, circumcision, and law must be accounted as filth. They are full of the devil's feces, which they wallow in like swine. The synagogue was a defiled bride, yes, an incorrigible whore, and an evil slut. Wow. He argues that synagogues and schools should be set on fire and their prayer books destroyed, rabbis forbidden to preach, homes razed, and property and money confiscated. They should be shown no mercy or kindness, afforded no legal protection, and these poisonous, venomous, envenomed worms should be drafted into forced labor, or expelled for all time. Now, what does this sound like to you? Doesn't this sound like Hitler just said, oh, you know what? I'm just going to do what the Catholic Church has been doing. I'm just going to do what Martin Luther liked to do. Isn't this interesting? It gets more interesting. Please, stay tuned. They should be shown no mercy or kindness, afforded no legal protection, he also seems to advocate their murder, writing, we are at fault in not slaying them. Catholics, though, shouldn't be too quick to point a finger at Luther's anti-Semitism because he didn't invent it. Like bigotry and racism, it was a learned behavior from the Roman Catholic Church in which he was raised, educated, and ordained as an Augustinian monk. Although he protested against many of the Catholic Church's beliefs and practices, one belief he embraced was the Catholic Church's contempt for the Jews. Here is a quote from A Moral Reckoning by Daniel Goldhagen on page 166. And I quote, In 1941, December, Protestant evangelist church leaders of several regions of Germany collectively issued an official proclamation that declared the Jews incapable of being saved by baptism, owing to their racial constitution to be responsible for the war and to be born enemies of the world and Germany. They therefore urge that the severest measures against the Jews be adopted and that they be banished from German lands. Would not the superlative, the severest measures, encompass the death penalty? You bet. And with the context of the apocalyptic war with the Soviet Union and of the Germans' already ongoing extermination of Soviet Jewry, it could have meant only one thing. With these words, the Protestant church leadership of a good part of Germany collectively as a corporate group and with the authority of their offices on their own initiative implicitly endorsed the mass slaughter of Jews or at least knew that many would understand them to be endorsing the annihilation, which amounts to the same. Of course, the Vatican remained neutral throughout World War II, but guess which American banks and companies funded the Nazis until the end and profited by Jewish slave labor. Did you know the Bush family are Nazis? Do you know that the Bavarian Brotherhood of Death, also known as the Thule Society or the Thule Society, 
and Skull and Bones are one and the same order, working for a new world order, including the order of the Jesuits and including the order of the Holy See? Do you know that the Skull and Bones member, Prescott Bush, George Bush's father and, his, and GW's grandfather, was censured for laundering Nazi money at, a, at the Union Bank in, in 1943? Did you know I.G. Farben and Rockefeller Standard Oil were partners throughout the rise of Hitler and during the entire Second World War? As you will see, many big American banks funded the Nazis and Hitler's rise to power. The planes that the Nazis flew couldn't be powered without the fuel additive supplied by Standard Oil throughout the war. It actually kept the war going two years longer by using concentration camp slave labor to make gasoline out of coal. This is what we're dealing with. In 1998, the BBC reported Barclays Bank had agreed to pay $3.6 million to Jews whose assets were seized from French branches of their British-based bank during World War II. Chase Manhattan Bank uh, also acknowledged seizing about 100 ac accounts held by Jews in Paris during World War II. <laughs> Recently unclassified reports from U.S. Treasury about the activities of Chase in Paris in the 1940s indicate that local branches worked in close collaboration with the German authorities in freezing Jewish assets. So, these banks, American banks as well, um, were seizing assets. The Daily News reported the same year the relationship between Chase and the Nazis apparently was so cozy that Carlos Niederman, the Chase branch chief in Paris, wrote his supervisors in Manhattan that the bank enjoyed very special esteem with top German officials and a rapid expansion of deposits, according to Newsweek. Niederman's letter was written in May 1942, five months after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor and the U.S. also went to war with Germany. The BBC also reported in 1999 a French government commission investigation of the seizure of Jewish bank accounts during the Second World War says five American banks, Chase Manhattan Bank, J.P. Morgan, Guaranteed Trust Company of New York, Bank of the City of New York, and American Express had taken part. These are the, this is the glue of the New World Order. This, this, is, the, this is what holds them all together, these, these banks and the central banks that they own and control. And this has been going on uh, since, well, with, since the Federal Reserve Crime Syndicate and before that with the banking systems. But they finally really got control of the money supply. Um, and Nathan Rothschild, as he had said, uh, I care not who makes the laws so long as I can control the money. Whoever makes the money really controls the country. It doesn't matter who uh, makes its laws. And that's very true. And that's what we're living under. It's an oligarchy, basically. Um, we, we know these politicians are all corrupt criminals. All of them. I mean, no matter how you look at it, there's, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's very few that are, that are truly worth, worth anything. Uh, politicians are paid for puppets of, the, of these uh, special interests to keep this system going. And it was no different during the war. And, and it's funny, it's the same characters from the collapse of the banking, isn't it? Same characters from the two... They, they create these, cre these crises and profit from them. They always know. In 9-11, they knew that to buy puts on the airlines so they could make billions. They knew about everything. They knew just how to shake the market and get what they want and move the, the agenda forward. Patriot Act, other treasonous acts. This is the New World Order. It is what we're dealing with. Um... In 2004, George Bush's grandfather, George H.W. Bush's father, the late U.S. Senator Prescott Bush, was a director and shareholder of companies that profited from their involvement with the financing of Nazi Germany. The Guardian obtained uh, confirmation from newly discovered files at the U.S. National Archives that a firm of which Prescott Bush was a director was involved with the financial architects of Nazism. His business dealings continued until his company assets were seized in 1942, under the Trading with the Enemy Act. The documents reveal that the firm he worked for, Brown Brothers Harriman, acted as a U.S. base for the German industrialist 
Fritz Thyssen, who helped finance Hitler in the 1930s before falling out with him at the end of the decade. The Guardian has seen evidence that shows Bush was the director of the New York-based Union Banking Corporation, UBC, that represented Fison's U.S. interests, and he continued to work for the bank after America entered the war. Bush was a founding member of the Bank Union uh, Banking Corporation. The bank was set up by Harriman and Bush's father-in-law to provide a U.S. bank for the Thysons, Germany's most, Germany's most powerful industrial family. By the late 1930s, Brown Brothers Harriman, which claimed to be the world's largest private investment bank, and UBC, had bought and shipped millions of dollars of gold, fuel, steel, coal, and U.S. Treasury bonds to Germany, both feeding and financing Hitler's buildup for war. This is all on record. Between 1931 and 1933, UBC bought more than $8 million worth of gold, which $3 million was shipped abroad. According to documents seen by The Guardian, after UBC was set up, it transferred $2 million to BBH, Brown Brothers Harriman, between 1924 and 1940. And the assets of UBC hovered around $3 million, dropped to a million on only a few occasions. UBC was caught red-handed operating an American shell company for the Fison family eight months after America had entered the war, and that this was bank had, had partly financed Hitler's rise to power. These same forces are pushing for a new world order today, a one-world government ruled from Jerusalem. Ben-Gurion, Israel's first prime minister, revealed much of this agenda and the creation of, of the Club of Rome's Ten Kingdoms to Look magazine. He also um, predicted the European Union and how everything is moving towards this world government. In an article, as I mentioned, from January 4th, 1962, and I quote, Gradual democratization of the Soviet Union and the abolition of wars by 1987 is predicted by Israel Premier David Ben-Gurion in a statement published on the current issue of Look Magazine, which carries the number of interviews on the world's outlook for 25 years from now. Mr. Ben-Gurion's statement reads, The image of the world in 1987 is traced in my imagination. The Cold War will be a thing of the past. Internal pressure of the constantly growing intelligentsia in Russia for more freedom and the pressure of the masses for raising their living standards may lead to a gradual democratization of the Soviet Union. It absolutely happened. He was off by only a couple of years. <clears throat> the fall of the Soviet Union. He had it traced down almost to the year, 87. And this is how they do it. They give you like four or five little pieces of true information and some couple of things that haven't quite come true yet. So listen to this one. Again, 1962. On the other hand, the increasing influence of the workers and farmers and the rising political importance of men of science, which is what's happening, may transform the United States into a welfare state with a planned economy, which has happened. Western and Eastern Europe will become a federation of autonomous states having a socialist and democratic regime. Bingo. Where are we? With the exception of the USSR as a federated Eurasian state and all other continents will become united in a world alliance at whose disposal will be an international police force. We're moving towards this, ladies and gentlemen. We have this United Nations program for the cities to go after violent extremists. We have some serious stuff festering here and dwelling, um, happening before our very eyes. Um, we have to really be careful what's going on. We have to keep an eye out and understand that this is no joke. Uh, this, is, this is evidence of a program that they are, it's not a conspiracy because they're telling you what they're doing. History has proven it to happen. And that international police force, that world court that they have, and the trumping of all the rights and the Agenda 21, United Nations, Sustainable Development. All this stuff is all there, that global warming fraud. It's all to bring us to this wor new world order. So Ben-Gurion thinks all armies will be abolished and there'll be no more wars. 
very, very utopian. That certainly is not true. There will be much murder and mayhem, have all armies abolished, and have no more war. There'd be no resistance, there'd be no more war. In Jerusalem, the United Nations, a truly United Nations, will build a shrine of the prophets to serve the federated union of all continents. This will be the seat of the Supreme Court of Mankind to settle all controversies among federated continents as prophesied by Isaiah. Higher education will be the right of every person in the world and a pill to prevent pregnancy will slow down the explosive natural increase in China and India. And by 1987, the average lifespan of man will reach 100 years. Look Magazine, 1962. Well, we haven't reached 100 years, or at least the general population doesn't have that ability. I mean, David Rockefeller is an exception, and uh, Henry Kissinger, because they're going to probably, of course, well, they will, of course, exceed 100 years. It's a given. Um, they have uh, access to the, to the technology, life extension technology, and we are poisoned with poisonous water, fluoride in the water, and GMO food, and... Um, chemtrails and radiologicals we're just we're just inundated with things that cause illness and then the drugs that cause side effects I don't have to get into this whole thing because we're talking about the Zionists and the New World Order the Zionists are the same forces behind the creation of the UN and the State of Israel mankind is in the vicious grip of a satanic cult whose power is so great they can make their war against humanity seem normal and inevitable because of course you look at these look what's going on in Israel look what's going on in Israel uh, with the Palestinians and in American media it's just it's it's always this you know th these people are terrorists that, that and it's just not the full picture and it's not right in fact here's a Holocaust survivor who um, has his own viewpoint on this. His name, he was an Auschwitz survivor. His name is Hajo Meyer, and he talks about the Israeli occupation and their apartheid. I uh, was nine when Hitler came to power, but I was about ten months in Auschwitz. And I learned a lot about the doctrines of a fascist state. The lesson I took from my stay in Auschwitz was anybody belonging to the Jewish people is not allowed to behave ever like our perpetrator, our, our, the people who did the thing to us. Look, I think why I have a certain right to be proud of being of Jewish origin is because the Jews were the pioneers of interhuman ethics and the Jewish idea of how to treat a foreigner, how to treat a, a servant which is in the Old Testament was taken up by nobody less than Jesus Christ who was the last of the great Jewish prophets. The prophets in the whole tradition wanted to stress and to uh, to stress the ethical content of Judaism and so there is reason enough to be proud and what is happening now in Israel towards the, Isra the, the Palestinians is exactly the opposite is exactly the opposite they they treat them like like vermin they 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 talk about them in terms i mean like for instance the 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 chief of staff uh, of the israeli army recently the 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 palestinians are a, a cancerous growth i mean that type of talking is exactly the opposite and is actually is actually like nazi talking that's what was said about me when i was a boy a jewish boy in germany under the Nazis. You know, when, when, when the Nazis guessed the Jews, the world was silent. Now, the world is silent while the Jews or the Israelis uh, harass, uh, humiliate, 
this prop, uh, and, 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 and steal away land from the Palestinians. And the world is silent. And I want to awake the world. Because any criticism on the policies of Israel is hampered and made impossible by a terrible trick and, and crime of Israeli propaganda that any criticism on the politics of Israel comes out is induced by anti-Semitic feelings. And our main purpose is to show to the world that we are Jews and we are conscious Jews and we want to show that you must criticize Israel if you at all want anything good for the Jews in the world because what Israel is doing is destroying the Jewish world and the Jewish heritage. And that's what it is, apartheid. So Ben Gurion, you know, we have to understand where this is all leading. What is so evil about this satanic cult is that even when their plot is exposed, as it is right here, naked, and you can see it, you can put the pieces together if you have the time, you take the time, and you do the research. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. It's all documented. It's history. Many of the things they're proud of. They write books about it. Tragedy and hope. The Zionists are the same forces behind the creation of the United Nations and the State of Israel. Like most nations and religions, Jews have been subverted from within. Zionists are pawns of the Sabbateans, who use the Holocaust to engineer the creation of Israel. Millions of Jews have been sacrificed to create a Sabbatean homeland, a burnt offering to Satan, none other than that. The Rothschilds and others who call themselves Jews are principally responsible for the Holocaust, are to this day furthering the goals of the New World Order, where all religions are to be abolished in favor of a Gaia, earth worship, or world new age religion. We see evidence of this everywhere in the world today. Christians will refer to Revelation 2.9, beware the false Jews who call themselves Jews but are really of the synagogue of Satan. In 1666, Sabbatai Zevi, a self-proclaimed Jewish messiah, was forced to convert to Islam or die by the Turkish Sultan. By pretending to convert, Zevi led a popular heresy based on the satanic strain of Kabbalism. The rabbis had denounced him and his followers. After his conversion, over a million followers, who later included financiers like the Rothschilds, imitated his example. But they just didn't pretend to be Muslims or Christians. They pretended to be Jews as well. Communist defector Bella Dodd revealed that during the 1930s, the Communist Party had 1,100 members join the Catholic priesthood. Many became bishops, cardinals, and now with Jesuit Cardinal uh, George Borgoglio, Pope Francis, we have a communist pope. The satanic cult infiltrated and subverted most governments and religions by adopting this chameleon strategy and soon established an invisible tyranny. In the words of researcher and author Clifford Schack, quote, Through infiltration, stealth, and cunning, this invisible network has come to rule us all. Forty-one years after Shabbati Zevi's death in 1717, they would infiltrate masonry, guilds in England, and establish Freemasonry. Zevi's successor, Jacob Frank, would have a great impact on the inner core of Freemasonry, known as the Illuminati. Formed in 1776, Freemasonry would become the hidden force behind events like the American and French and Russian revolutions. The creation of the United Nations and Israel, both world wars including the Holocaust, and the assassinations of the Kennedy brothers who together with their father tried to thwart the efforts of the network on American soil. Sabbatean Frankists also refer to as the cult of the all-seeing eye Look on the back of your one dollar bill to understand their influence in your life. Your political and religious chameleons. They are political and religious chameleons. They're everywhere. 
there is power. Everywhere there is power, they are there. They are the good guys and the bad guys. The World War II era is a perfect example. The following leaders were members of the cult of the all-seeing eye, Sabatini and Frankists, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Winston Churchill, Adolf Hitler, Eugenio Pacelli, that's Pope Pius XII, Francisco Franco, Benito Mussolini, Hirohito, and Mao Zedong. All members of the cult. That's interesting. That, and, and the fact that uh, at Yalta, we also have um, the fact that all three of them were Freemasons, 33rd degree Freemasons. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Winston Churchill, and Joseph Stalin. Isn't it interesting how Hitler took the rap and Stalin, who, who was, was much more of a, I mean, unbelievable horror, Stalin was, was much more of a mass murderer than Hitler, four to one. He gets sort of a pass because they created this phony Cold War to divide the, and conquer, again, moving this new world order forward. Uh, it was just another illusion, another one of their tricks to... Uh, to move forward. It's it's just worked that way. Look at what happens after after FDR, Truman moved it even f further. The only one who got in the way in America was JFK. And everyone since JFK has been to the letter, moving us into world socialism, destroying our sovereignty and our individuality, taking away our rights, our individual rights for the collective creating a communist state. It's, it's coming. I mean, we're in it. We're in socialism. It's not too far off. You know? They're already demonizing people like myself or anyone that wants to speak out. It's out you know, free will? No, there's no free will. There is only the state. State control, state owned, state mommy, state daddy. That's the way it is. And then we have to stop it. We have to return to the Constitution, to the founding principles of this republic and lift by it and get rid of these criminals that have hijacked our government hang them for treason many of them are traitors they're traitors because they swore an oath to this order you starting to pick pick it all up starting to get it I hope so so historians educators and journalists collaborate by holding the false reality and distracting us from the truth. Our world, our perception of human experience, are shaped by an occult secret society. Our culture is an elaborate psyop. Obviously, the Sabbateans and their descendants should consume our attention. Instead, they are hidden from view. They were decisive in the so-called Enlightenment, secularism, and modernism, which are but baby steps to their Satanism. According to Rabbi Marvin Antelman, they believe sin is holy and should be practiced for its own sake. Since Judaism teaches that the Messiah will come when people are either become righteous or totally corrupt, the Sabbateans opted for debauchery. Since we cannot all be saints, let us all be sinners. We must all admit that the world has indeed become full of sin and debauchery on a mainstream level. We must admit this. It's true. It's happened. Look at what's going on. Miley Cyrus licking... Uh, sledgehammers and riding naked on a, on a wrecking ball, you know, uh, twerking on, on stage. It's just, it's insane what we're considering, you know, the basically mainstreaming of porn. It's just unbelievable. It's happening. It's happening. Now, their Illuminist do as thou wilt expression of their religious feelings is totally immoral. They believe that the end justifies the means and do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Here's some quotes uh, or essences from uh, To Eliminate the Opiate, Volume 2. Uh, I made a reference to that from page 87. In 1756, Jacob Frank and his followers were excommunicated by the rabbis. Rabbi Antelman says the Sabbateans were behind the reform, liberal, and revolutionary movements of the 19th century. They were also behind the reform and conservative movements in Judaism, including the Haskala, a Jewish assimilation. In other words, Jews have been influenced by the Sabbateans and don't even know it. That is their tactic. They don't advocate a satanic kingdom. They gently steer you that way by questioning the existence of God, by demanding sexual liberation, independence for women, internationalism, diversity, and religious tolerance. These all have an agenda. 
to undermine the collective forces, except their own. We are told free sex is a progressive and modern ideal. In fact, the Sabbatean sect has indulged in wife-sharing, sex orgies, adultery, and incest for more than 350 years. They also promoted interracial sex. They have partly inducted us into their cult. Sexual abandon is characteristic of communism, a direct outgrowth of Sabbateanism. Jacob Frank pimped his beautiful wife to recruit influential men. Female members of the Communist Party were used in the same way. Adam Weishaupt, the founder of the Illuminati, got his sister-in-law pregnant. A pertinent anecdote in his book, The Other Side of Deception, Mossad defector Viktor Ostrovsky described how the Mossad relax. At a party, the staff, including many unmarried young females, congregated around a pool totally naked. The influence of the Sabbatean conspiracy is hidden in plain sight. For example, the term Holocaust is used without regard to its true meaning. Rabbi Antelman states, that well before World War II, the term meant burnt offering, as in sacrifice. That's from page 199 of The Other Side of Deception. He quotes Bruno Bettelheim, who says, Calling the most callous, most brutal, most horrid, most heinous mass murderer a burnt offering is a sacrilege, a profanation of God and man. Page 205. Those who, uh, well, well in, who, who sacrifice was it? For what purpose? Obviously, it had something to do with the Sabbateans' occult practice. Every time we use that word, we unwittingly join in their sacrilege. According to Antelman, the Sabbateans hated Jews and sought their extinction. He cites rabbis who warned as far back as 1750 that if the Jews didn't stop the Sabbateans, they would be destroyed by them. That's on page 209, the other side of deception. And indeed, when some Jews try to save European Jewry from genocide, Antelman says the conservative and reform communities in the U.S. went to their merry way ignoring, went on their merry way ignoring these activities. So-called establishment organizations like the American Jewish Congress, the American Jewish Committee, and B'nai B'rith did virtually nothing. Sabbateans only marry within their demonic sect. They often marry rich, influential Gentiles. Thus, the fourth Baron Rothschild, Jacob's mother, was not Jewish, nor his wife. Another example is Al Gore's daughter Karenna's 1997 marriage to Andrew Schiff, the grandson of Jacob Schiff. Gore's father was a senator sponsored by Armand Hammer, Occidental Petroleum, whose own father was the founder of the American Communist Party. What is most incredibly ironic to me, at least, is the fact that today the Israeli Zionists treat the Palestinians not unlike the Nazis treated the Jews, subjecting them to similar restrictions and stripping away their rights. This is the greatest power of the deception. The false Jew Zionists who created and funded the Holocaust and used anti-Semitism as their tool for political gain are slowly ethnically cleansing Israel of all Palestinians, under everyone's nose. But the controlled mainstream media have everyone concentrating on other more important things like uh, football and the Mets making it to the World Series, or you're watching the Benghazi trials, where the fact that it was a political ploy again, even if all things that could have been done were done, the story, the cover story was a lie. It wasn't a video that caused that Mayhem that killed Ambassador Stevens, led to his death. It was a terrorist attack that the Obama regime did not want to um, admit that King Obama's, uh, you know, that Obama failed to stop to call the end to this terrorism. By pulling the troops out, he knew there would be more mayhem. And that's why we have this mayhem. He created it. Like the Zionists created the Holocaust and all these other demonic deceptions. Jews and Palestinians lived in peace for hundreds of years until the Zionists created their Jewish state and destabilized the entire Middle East by doing so. This is not what is taught in history books, of course, or propagandized in the media, but it is nonetheless true. Zionism is in direct conflict with Judaism. When they went to Yom Kippur, when the women went to Yom Kippur on the fast day, the, the Muslim men...
made this baby Satsa children the most precious objects they gave to them to, to, to protect. How could that be if they're our enemies, mortal enemies? Because they're not. It's not a religious conflict. That's a Zionist ploy of accusing everybody of being anti-Semitic. You want peace? You want to have a conference here of peace? Step back and look and read the facts. Not the facts that have been misconstrued by the Zionist propaganda. The facts that are realities. The facts on the ground. How we've been living for hundreds of years in Yemen, in Morocco, in Tunisia, in Palestine, in Egypt. What Arab land have not Jewish people been living together with Muslims without any human rights groups? Tell me what land the Jews did not live in harmony with the Muslims. In Iran, we have over 25,000 Jews there, thank God. Why? Because this is not a religious conflict. It's purely because of a political movement, a relatively new movement, which is antithetical, contradictory to the Jewish religion of thousands of years. Judaism is spirituality, a religion of compassion to emulate God. Zionism has been created 100 years ago by atheists, people who have abhorred religion, who wanted to transform Judaism from religion to nationality, to a purely materialistic base, godless in its essence. That is not Judaism, and they have no right to use the name of Israel. They've usurped our name, they've stolen our, our symbols, and they've stolen our identity. And they are causing death and destruction, year in and year out, for over 50 years. Death and bloodshed has not stopped because of a pure ideological belief, belief called Zionism. They sacrifice on their idol bodies, human beings, hearts, souls. They rent, they've destructed houses, they've destructed people's lives. What can we do about this? Let's step back and think. There is a solution, with God's help. If we would put away the politics, then we could know that we've been living and coexisting together. We most profusely apologize to the Muslims, to the Arabs, what has been done to them. And then we can return and make restitution for what has been done to them. And then we will be able to live in harmony. Not an Israeli state, a one Palestinian state. One state that we have been living for hundreds of years. There there will be peace. And you will see that this 50 years has been a nightmare, a mirage, and nothing to do. Your, your fear mongering, that's what Zionism does. It's panic, throwing, going into a theater and yelling fire, fire. That's what Zionists do. We've been living with the Muslims. We've been living, yes, Ahmadinejad keeps on stating that he does not want to harm the Jews, but the Zionists keep on attacking us. Of course you don't, because you have an agenda. You want to further Zionism. You want enemies. You want enemies in order to be able to say you're protecting the Jews. We don't want enemies. We want to live in peace. We have been always living in peace with the Muslims, and we will, with God's help, continue to live with them in peace. We implore the participants in this conference, read, step back, study the history truthfully, and see what the true Jewish voice is of hundreds of thousands of Jews who are still true to their religion, whether they're living in Jerusalem, whether they're living in New York, what do these Jews in Williamsburg section of Brooklyn, hundreds of thousands of Jews who are the most God-fearing in the community, why are they all opposed to the state of Israel? Why is that one Israeli flag in Williamsburg, Brooklyn? These are the most God-fearing religious Jews. Why don't they fly an Israeli flag? They have hospital help. They have had so ambulatories and everything free of charge to help people. The most greatest of charitable organizations. Why these compassionate people don't support the state of Israel? Why not? Why not? Because they are self-hating Jews. Why are they fools? Are they fools? The reason is simply because they fear God. And I know why. You don't know why, and I know why. Because they're God-fearing, and God forbid us to have a state. We are in exile by God with the free exile, and we are forbidden to oppress the people. We are forbidden to oppress the Palestinian people and steal their houses. That is what Judaism says. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. We have no right to the rule over the land of Palestine. This is what Judaism says, not what these you, what these robbers say. It's what the real Jews say. This is what this is what Zionists are doing: beating Jews, beating Orthodox Jews. 
As incredible as all of this seems, it is nonetheless true. Truth has been suppressed and occulted for millennia. Western society is morally bankrupt. Just turn on the TV, um, sex, 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 violence, 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 gun violence mostly. It's how ironic how Hollywood has the most shoot 'em up pictures and makes billions of dollars off guns and then they're anti guns. <laughs> Political. It's nonsense. It's again all part of this psyop. It's a huge one. This elaborate cult network controls politics, information, and culture. Most leaders are puppets, fools, or traitors. Even when their evil plots are exposed, they can convince everyone that they're either racist or bigoted or unpatriotic to believe the truth. It's a grand deception. The media is owned, the public is distracted. As a result, most live their lives in blissful ignorance and are completely unaware and unprepared for things to come. That's my concern. That's why I do this. So you can be prepared. Remember, as I mentioned at the beginning, the world is governed by very different personages from what is imagined by those who are not behind the scenes. And there's a lot of deception, but the common denominator are these secret societies, the Skull and Bones, the Thule Society, the Brotherhood of Death, the Zionists. They, these are all orders of the same order, the Order of the Quest, working to create a one-world totalitarian socialist government where they believe, the elite, that mankind will become like gods. That's So it's very, very close to what Hitler was trying to do with the Nazi race, the superior race. Uh, they believe that we can be this superior race and that we too will become gods. And understand these things. They are not to be taken lightly, they are true. But don't believe me. Find your own truth. Do some research. Take the time to look into these things. It's all there. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's not even a conspiracy. It's straight out in the open. All you have to do is look, because it is hidden. But it is hidden right before your eyes. But don't believe me. Do your own research. Find your own truth. There is only one truth. Seek, and you'll find it.